Hey YouTube, Muskrat Jim here in my basement. Don't mind the mess. Um, today what I'm going to do is start working on a rocket stove that I saw on the LDS Preppers channel and I'm going to modify mine to his design and I'll be using a few empty paint cans and a drill and some tin snips. So stay tuned and watch my progress. Better put some leather gloves on because I don't want to cut myself on the sharp metal edges. That'll be the lid of the stove. Okay, so that's going to be the bottom part where the fire will actually, where the fire and the coals will actually be. This paint can is still a little wet on the inside. Now a rocket stove has a fire feeding tube out the front of it. So for that I'm going to use just a regular size soup can and I'm going to put it about halfway up the fire chamber. This way it'll leave room in the bottom for coals. Actually I think what I'll do is I'll put it about two thirds of the way up. Let's go right about here. using a marker to mark where I have to cut. So there I'll cut that out and this opened up at both ends will be able to fit in there and I'll be able to feed the wood through the, the open side. I'd like to do a quick shout out to Todd in Nova Scotia, dragonfly hiker. You won't see me eating in this video, but I do have a cup of tea. Using tin snips, I cut the edge of the can like flower petals. Now this is the chimney portion, which will go over the firebox like this. And then what I can do is I can bend all of these tabs down and run some aluminum duct tape around it to hold it in place. Since this is going to be the chimney and my pot stand, I'm going 
going to have to drill a bunch of holes all around the perimeter of this can to allow the smoke to escape and to allow the fire to breathe. Okay, so it's time to assemble the stove. What I've also done is I've cut out this can, cut the bottom and top off, and it'll be the fuel port. Now this little piece is a shelf that goes inside the fuel port, and as you can see, the air can be sucked in underneath the fuel, like a, a fireplace flue, and that'll help feed the flames as well. And I've got a bucket full of, of sand here. So, we'll start out by putting sand in the bottom of the paint bucket. You want to get about half an inch, um, a centimeter's worth of sand on the bottom of the bucket to, to insulate the bottom of the fire chamber from the bottom of the bucket. See how high this sits. Two holes have to be level, so that looks about right there. So now the next step is to put the fuel port in there. So there, the fuel port is in. If you look inside the can, you can see where it comes through both can walls and into the fire chamber. So now all we have to do is fill up the gap between the two cans with more sand and put the cover on. Okay, so I filled it up with sand all the way around, taking care not to put any sand inside the lip of the can where the lid will have to fit. And what I found was the sand was so fine that it was falling out through the cracks here, so I put some plumber's putty all the way around here. I don't know how that's going to work, but I'm hoping that um, it doesn't dry and crack or whatever, but anyway... Um, at least it's helping to keep it in there now. And we'll put the lid on and we'll be almost done. What I want to try to do, instead of having this being loose like this, I'm going to try to solder right there and right there just to keep that in place so it doesn't happen to fall out when I'm carrying it by its handle. Soldering didn't work, so I went to plan B. What I did is I folded this down, which leaves, still leaves a space here for the flue, and I put in some sheet metal screws on either side to hold that shelf in place. So that's good and sturdy there now. The only thing left to do now is fire it up.
So there we have it. Only a couple of little twigs and a little bit of paper. She's burning like a charm.